not all Sherlock Holmes's clients were the rich and famous. They came from all walks of life, even the humblest. Indeed, he was more apt to give heed to the humble client, the minor tragedy, because that was the nature of the man, human and understanding. Yeah, hang it all, Holmes. Let me have a look. After all, I did buy the beastly thing. Why don't you wait for moving pictures, Watson? Much more interesting, you know. Pictures that move? Ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. They've already been invented by a Frenchman named Lumiere, and an American Edison seems to have made it quite practical. Absurd. <laughs> He'll never get anywhere with them, you'll see. Not commercially, anyway. Nobody will be interested. <laughs> Come in. Mr. Sherlock Holmes in, please, sir. Yes, he is. I'd like to see him if he'll speak to me, please, sir. Of course he will. This is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I'm Dr. Watson. Miss... Uh... Miss, sir? <laughs> this is just you. Oh, come now, my dear. It's not as bad as that. It's Billy, sir. My husband. He's dead. Oh, my dear. Yeah, come and sit down and tell me about it. Get a cup of tea, Watson. They say he hanged himself, sir, three days ago in a hotel in Glasgow. Oh, yes, I remember. William Hooper, a travelling salesman with Whipple Brothers, I believe. Yes, brooms and brushes. He was on his last job for the firm. They were letting him go. Yes, sir, but Billy would have found another job. He wasn't afraid to work. Oh, of course he wasn't. He didn't hang himself, sir. He didn't. Jesse, I believe you have a baby. Yes, sir. Six months old. Is there any uh, insurance? Yes, sir, but they say because Billy hanged himself. The policy won't be paid. Tell me, Jesse, when did you last see Billy? On the day he went up to Glasgow, on the train. I went up part of the way with him to Doncaster. To cheer him up, I take it. Yes, sir. He was so upset about losing his job, about it being his last trip for Whipples. Yes, of course, I understand. Was he in a more cheerful frame of mind when you left the train at Doncaster? Oh, yes, sir. We had ever such a jolly time. There was a gentleman in the compartment who was so funny, he kept us in stitches. When he laughed, you just couldn't help laughing with him. I see. Was there anyone who might have benefited by his death? No, sir. No one at all. Was he a native of London? No, sir. He came from Expo. Th that's a little village in Cornwall. I see. Well, I can't promise anything, Mrs. Hooper, but I'll certainly do my best. Now, where can I get in touch with you? Number 26 Western Lane. And, and sir, there's something I must tell you. Yes, Jessie? I I'm not very well off, and what with the expenses of the baby and... Oh, never mind, never mind. There's no fee. Oh, thank you, sir. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Jesse. Sir, I don't know how to... Holmes, hmm? how did you know so much about William Hooper? I read about it in the papers, Watson. One of those domestic tragedies that become buried in the back page. Stinging nettles. <laughs> if you want to kill somebody, you don't. You can poison them, or shoot them, or stab them, or push them over a cliff if you like. But you, you don't hang them. It's still deucedly awkward. Unless, of course, you want to make it look like suicide. 
Oh, Watson, be a good fellow, would you, and buy me 15 feet of manila rope before we go out to Glasgow? Well, we could buy that anyway. We... Glasgow? <laughs> Mr. Holmes, I'm only allowing you to see this rope because my cousin, Inspector Lestrade, asked me to. He tells me you've been a wee thing useful to him down there in London from time to time. Well, that's uh, very kind of you to say so, Inspector McDougall. I'm sure that your uh, cousin would appreciate that. Well, there it is. Nothing but an ordinary rope. Nothing unusual about it at all. Well, it's an efficient knot which anyone could have tied. And you're quite convinced that Billy Hooper hanged himself with it, eh? Well, he put the rope round his neck, stood in a chair, and then kicked the chair from under him. But first slinging the rope over a ceiling beam and uh, tying it to a bedpost, eh? Aye. Have you uh, examined the rope with a glass, Inspector? Glass, Mr. Holmes. In Glasgow, we have another use, a more practical use for a glass. To put a wee drop in, you can. Oh, yes, yes. Then you'll find this, uh, this glass a wee bit different, Inspector. It helps you to see things more clearly. Just what am I supposed to see with this? That the fibres on the rope that were slung over the beam point towards the noose. Yeah, I can see which way they point, but I can't see the point of them. Ah, oh, well. You will, Inspector. Now I should like to have a look at Billy Hooper's shoes and the room in which he was supposed to have hanged himself. Mr. Holmes, I'm beginning to have a great deal of sympathy for my cousin, Inspector Lestrade, to say nothing of the entire London police force. <laughs> Sir, morning. Beautiful morning, isn't it? This is the room, gentlemen. This is the beam, I presume, over which the rope was slung. Uh, and this is the bedpost the laddie tied the rope to. Hmm. Interesting. Just a little routine detection, sir. Why don't you go back to sleep? Watson, let me have the rope you bought in London, would you? Yes. Thank you. Now, would you come and stand under the noose? Mm hmm. Uh, you, just a minute, Holmes. What are you up to? Mr. Holmes, I'm afraid I can't allow you to hang your friend in my presence. Oh, very well. I only wanted to make the demonstration as graphic as possible. Would you hold it, Watson? Mm -hmm. Now, observe the rope, Inspector, passing over the beam as I hoist Watson up. What is all this in aid of? Oh, just an experiment, Watson. But I believe you put on a bit of weight, old chap. This is nonsense in aid of. Let's have a look at the rope. Inspector, observe that part of the rope which passed over the beam. You will note that the fibres point towards the noose. Exactly like the fibres of the rope Hooper was hanged with. Hmm. Well, so they do. But if he had hanged himself by kicking the chair from under him, his body dropping down would have caused the fibres to bend in the opposite direction, away from the noose. I've got it, Holmes. And because the fibres bend towards the noose, therefore, Hooper must have been pulled upwards. And since he obviously didn't pull himself up, someone else must have. And that is murder. Murder? What are you talking about? The late William Hooper, sir. Mr. Holmes here, by a brilliant feat of detection, has just proved conclusively that he was hanged here, in this very room. Hanged in this, in this very room? Oh, oh, let me go in here. Hanged. And this, I presume, is the chair that Hooper stood on. Ah, uh, that's it. Yeah, there are no scratches on the seat. And there was a nail sticking out of Hooper's right shoe. Further evidence, if you require any, Inspector. Ah, fragments of glass. Was there a broken drinking glass found on the floor, Inspector? No, nothing at all. 
Oh, I expect the murderer tidied up after him. But I think that we'll discover that he gave Hooper a drink with a drug in it. Rather difficult to analyze at the moment, but I shall have a look into it. Oh, wasn't there someone in the bed, Watson, when we came in? John Carver, 28 Merritt Road, Birmingham. Henry Hampton, 76 Casket. 76 Casket Lane. Do you recall Hampton? Hampton. Hampton. Yes, I remember a salesman, I believe. Stay just the one night. No one of our regulars. Hmm. Did you notice anything in particular about him? No, no. Yes, he limped. That's right, he limped. Hmm. He limped, did he? That will prove useful. Thank you. Aside from the fact that Hooper was murdered, what else to be learning, Glasgow? Well, Watson, that the man who registered under the fictitious name of Henry Hampton of 76 Casket Lane is the murderer. Oh, I see. A salesman just happened to be wandering about with a length of manila rope on him. Yes, of course. Uh, didn't you know? Uh, he's a rope salesman. But hang it all, Holmes. At least 50 people registered at the hotel that night. What makes you pick on this Hampton chap? Because, my dear fellow, an elementary geographical knowledge of London would tell you that the even numbers in Casket Lane stop in the 60s. Number 76 is obviously a figment of Mr. Hampton's imagination. I see. But then, if both his name and his address are false, where are we going to start looking for him? We begin, obviously, with a trip to X-Bar, Billy's birthplace in Cornwall. Now I'll tell you one. About the chap who woke up one morning with an elephant trunk instead of his nose. <laughs> Began the day by blowing his own trumpet. <laughs> Anyway, it's nonsense. The murder will be the other side of the world, by love. Good morning, Jessie. I, I hope we haven't interrupted your household chores. Oh, no, sir. Please come in. Thank you. So that's a little man, eh? <laughs> yes, sir, that's little man. Oh, I say, Holmes. Look at that chest, too. Look at these biceps. <laughs> yes, Watson, look at that nice high forehead and that well-developed cranium. Won't you have some tea, sir? I'm sorry, Jessie, but I'm afraid we won't have time. We've come to ask you a few questions about your husband. Yes, sir. Oh, please sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Watson and I have just come back from Expar. It occurred to me that the seeds of what happened in Glasgow were sown in the past. We learned, Jesse, that when Billy was seven years old, his grandfather was murdered. Did you know that? No, sir. Billy never told me. I can understand that. He was a sensitive young man, and he wouldn't want to burden you with a gruesome story. What, what happened, sir? Well, at that time, Billy was living alone with his grandfather on an isolated farm. One night, the old man gave shelter to a stranger. The following morning, Billy's grandfather was found murdered, and Billy was discovered incoherent with fear, hiding in a shed. The murderer was never identified. The only thing that Billy could tell the police was that the man lived. Exactly, Watson. However, years passed. The murderer felt comparatively safe. There was only one person in the world who could identify him, the man who once had been that seven-year-old boy. And he probably thought the little boy'd forget anyway. But the little boy didn't forget. The memory remained here, dormant for many years, until it was reawakened in Glasgow. Oh, that window. If it was dark, don't it? It was dropping shut like that. Billy was going to fix it. In Glasgow, sir? Yes, where he encountered the murderer. The memory began to stir, perhaps awakened by that limp. And the murderer began to realize that sooner or later, Billy would remember and identify him. Now I understand. Understand what? Billy's nightmares. All such frightful ones he'd always have. Moaning something about a, a hobble. Of course, a hobble, a limp. But he could never remember what the nightmares were about. Did Billy ever mention meeting a man who limped? 
No, sir, never. Then I believe, Watson, we can conclude that Billy had never met the man before the chance encounter in Glasgow. Oh, I'm sure he hadn't, sir. So the signs still point to our mysterious Mr. Hampton. Who is Mr. Hampton, sir? A gentleman I very much wish to lay my hands on. And I will. You may be sure of that, Jesse. My feet are kidding me. How many more of these companies have we got to see? Oh, chin up, old chap, only about a dozen or so. Well, can't we cover them in a hansom? What? A hansom cab on a beautiful day like this? Oh, don't be silly. Good afternoon. Do you use a colon or a semicolon after dear, sir? Oh, a um, uh, colon, miss. Now, come along, Holmes, you know better than that. A semicolon, young lady. But I can't find either. Uh, tell me, is your sales manager in? A sales manager? Uh, that'd be Mr. Thornton, wouldn't it? Or Mr. Baxter? <laughs> yes, Mr. Baxter. Uh, did you have an appointment with him? Uh, no, must we have one? I don't know. I'll ask him. <coughs> New, I'd say, Holmes. Mm -hmm. Yes, a safe deduction, Watson. Mm. You noticed the uh, fingernails, uh, unbroken. Oh, really? Mr. Baxter says you don't have to have an appointment. He'll see you now. Ah, thank you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. <laughs> and what may I do for you? Good afternoon. My name's Dr. Watson, and this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, eh? Oh, this is an honor. <laughs> Not here to arrest anyone, though, I hope. <laughs> Would it be an imposition to ask for your salesman's itinerary during, let's say, the last few weeks, the cities they've covered? No sooner asked than done, as the genie said. <laughs> oh, must be in the file drawer. Our road chart, you know. Uh, Dr. Watson, would you mind getting it? It's in the drawer over there. Yes, of course I will. <laughs> the, the brown folder. Sorry. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Now, let's see, shall we? Hmm? <laughs> uh, Johnson covered Wales all this month. Harkinson over in Ireland. I'm quite sure you've had no one in Glasgow. That's right. Used to go on the road myself, but not any longer. Can't stand the trains. Haven't been in one for years. <laughs> well, thank you very much indeed. And uh, good day to you, sir. Good day. Come back if you've got any loose ends to tie up. Good afternoon, Mrs. Hooper. You don't remember me, Mr. Baxter. Oh, yes, of course I do, sir. Won't you come in? Thank you. You were the, the jolly gentleman on the train with Billy and me. Give me your coats. Oh, uh, thank you. I've come to offer you my deepest sympathy. Yes, sir. Oh, tragedy, a tragedy. He was a fine boy. Come now, little lady. There's always a ray of sunshine somewhere. <laughs> ah, there it is. A little bundle of happiness. A joy and blessing for you. You'll always have... Ah, that's right. You didn't know, did you? I was seated all the time you were in the compartment, wasn't I? Well, just goes to show you, we all have our trials and tribulations. 
Yes, sir. Oh, but here am I, forgetting what I came for. How would you like a job, little lady, and someone to take care of the baby? Oh, sir. Then let's have a cup of tea and talk about it, shall we? Oh, oh sir, I don't know how to thank you. I I'll do anything. <laughs> I'll send you to a secretarial school, and then you'll be my secretary. Oh, sir, that would be wonderful. You know, I didn't know how I was going to manage. Oh. <laughs> Huh? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Looking at you is sugar enough for me. <laughs> oh, <sir>, really. <laughs> My friend Sherlock Holmes tells me you've been to see him. Do you know Sherlock Holmes, sir? Oh, I should think I do. Always asking my advice, Sherlock is. Can't solve a case without me, he says. <laughs> He and Dr. Watson went up to Glasgow, you know, inquiring at the hotel where Billy was. And then they went down to x -Bar. How do you know all that, sir? Oh, Sherlock tells me everything. <laughs> I suppose you told him that you and Billy met me on the train. And you gave him my name. I'm afraid I'd forgotten your name, sir. Had you now? <laughs> then you're the only one who knows, eh? Well, <laughs> wouldn't Sherlock be surprised to find that I'd met Billy on the train? Yes, indeed. Wouldn't he be surprised? <laughs> yes, sir. Now, bring up your tea, and we'll talk about your new job. Huh? <laughs> What is it? On the train coming down from Glasgow. What about the train? That's where we heard that laugh. By Jove, you're right. The man telling jokes in the next compartment. Oh, I've been a fool. Why do you suppose he sent you to get that road chart when he could have got it himself? Well, I suppose I was nearest. Oh, no, because he didn't want us to see that he limped. Don't you understand? He's the jolly man in the train who cheered up Billy and Jesse. Yeah. Cabby! Cabby! Here! Quickly, Watson. We've no time to lose. I'm right behind you. Baxter's office? No. Who's the only person who can prove that Baxter met Billy? Why, uh, uh, Jesse. Yes, of course. 26 Western Lane, driver and fast. We've got to stop another hanging. Just sleep. Sleep. to go to Sherlock Holmes, eh? Couldn't leave well alone, could you? You're just like your husband in that. He couldn't let sleeping dogs lie either. The way he looked when he saw me walk out of the train at Glasgow. Well, maybe he wouldn't have remembered my limp from that night, and maybe he would. No point in taking chances. I don't believe in taking chances. Mrs. Hooper? Mrs. Hooper? It's Sherlock Holmes. Open the door. Mrs. Hooper? Jesse, it's Sherlock Holmes. Open the door. Jesse, open the door. All right, Watson, break it down. It's all right, she's just drugged. Look, what? Neck broken. 